We kick off today's instalment with evidence captured at the moment when I first began work on today's construction project. Quick one today, because this Alan! thing has become my nemesis. At times I wished I'd never begun. Not Alan, this thing. I'll show you how I made it, and why it's a thorn in my side and indeed in my very existence. I'll avoid melodrama and exaggeration at every stage, naturally. I'm installing Alan's Reflex diesel heater this winter, but before the temperatures drop and I can't do glass fibre work outside, I need to install the heater's through-hull flue and the weatherproof hood. There are plenty of designs on the market, and I'm going with the Scandinavian-inspired H-shape hood, or terminal, or whatever you want to call them. They are good at battling breaking waves and cold downdrafts, and they don't have any moving parts to fail. Prices can approach £300, although more affordable copies do exist. But, I thought, with all the spare time that I do not have, I'll make my own. It'll be much cheaper, and I can customise the size and the design, and I can make a YouTube video about it. The first raw ingredient is a very thin layer of 316 grade stainless steel. I'm using it as a corrosion and heat resistant internal liner to the hood. It's stiffer than foil, and holds its radius nicely without crumpling, plus it cuts with a good pair of composite shears I no longer use to cut Kevlar fabric. I'm forming the layers of my hood around cylinders of polystyrene at the correct diameter for my stove chimney. And to keep everything fixed together and in shape, an extra heat resistant silicon sealant. I've made four of these steel wrap cylinders, a central vertical, the cross branch, and the two side verticals. But now the first of the tricky moments of jaw dropping innovation and artistry. To fit the sections together, they need a 100mm circular cut made in the ends. It was a little messy, but I was relieved when the drill on a high speed setting cut through the steel without grabbing or snagging it. Some tightly wound masking tape strapping helped. Using a paper template and a sharpie, I could mark on the midsection holes to cut manually as well. The next layer was glass fibre rope lagging, similar to that used when I did the exhaust pipe recently. For some reason, I forgot to photograph this. Anyhow, around it went, and bonded to the steel with a film of more silicon adhesive. To get a flat surface, the next layer was a woven glass fibre wrap, not chop strand mat, which lacks the mechanical strength of woven and doesn't wrap nicely. In the end, and with the assistance of some resin compatible fixing spray, I ended up with some pleasingly mummified H-shaped structure, bound in multiple layers. You can even see a little evidence of the rope lagging sticking out from beneath. Of course, when I dissolve the polystyrene core later on, in its current state the hood will have no structural strength at all, so I need to laminate the outer layers of glass fibre with epoxy resin. Especially in the lower section, just in case hot air from the stove heats up the steel lining to the extent that the whole structure warms, I'm using a high temperature formulated epoxy resin. It's not rated as high as the silicon sealant, but it's pretty good for the outer layer, at 170 degrees Celsius. I ended up with a rigid shelled hood, and this is where I compress somewhere between two and three decades of work into a split second. This is the resulting product, and the finished surface. The amount of filling, fairing and sanding was just monstrous, and the surface still isn't perfect. Alan, I've said many times, isn't there for his looks, but I do take some pride in the appearance of things like this. The middle section of the downpipe I've not bothered with, as it will be glassed into Alan's fiberglass shell, and the bottom I've primed and sealed, as it'll slot into a silicon coupling later on. I'm going to give it two coats of Alan's two-pack polyurethane paint. The first, to give us a good base and to show me any more dimples or surface imperfections I'm not happy to let go, and then I'll do a final coat after installation. So this is where I've got to, and I'll drill through Alan's starboard side bow end in an upcoming episode to fix it in. Should I have bought a ready-made hood? Probably, but something in me wanted to finish it, and I like the fact it's lagged and with a glass fibre outer. It'll also cost less than £60, plus a significant portion of my sanity and self-respect. I'll bring us to a close with a view of this extraordinary hull that's appeared in the yard. Not ideal for use in icy waters, I'd venture to say. Anyone know what it's going to be for? I don't. 
Those of you who are enormously offended by the brevity of this episode might want to head over to my other channel, arguably, where my latest episode is actually over an hour long and it's about the Iceman, Wim Hof, and about whether the man is a fraud or a good egg. Bye.